Greetings family, this is Bomani Tamba, and welcome to our Black Star Pan-African Community uh, meeting. This is an aspect of combination of private slash public, but everything is public. Um, it's uh, recorded out, recording that uh, we just want to make sure that we give consistent updates. So today is October 30th, and um, the goal is to just go through the documentation and for, this, for us to share some information about our community. So as far as Black Star Pan-African community, uh, myself operates as the president of the community uh, and operate the business administration here in uh, Georgia. And then when we come to Ghana, we usually bring groups and then we take them to the office, the land, and doc do our documentation and keep it going. And the other aspect of, um, you know, what uh, we do is literally just build an energy to where we can really just help our brothers and sisters make certain moves and help them get settled. So me and Azeebo have been just working consistently to find ways how we can just, you know, work with our people. So you, when you see the sign, the, the logo over there, uh, that's our office right there. So Azeebo operated as the manager and Cassandra as the secretary. And we're still figuring a lot of things out. And, you know, we have, we're working on game plans to make a lot of things work. But these things are very difficult. Uh, it becomes a lot easier when we can work together in code and work together as a people and do things together. Because uh, based on my travels to uh, Ghana over the last 16 years, I don't feel comfortable moving unless I'm being unless I'm a part of a community like what we have established. So I'm always telling people that if you want what you want in Africa, you're gonna have to build it. And if you don't build it, you're gonna have to deal with certain situations. Uh, example, for those who just want to like retire and enjoy certain things in Ghana, uh, we have incredible neighborhoods in Ghana, like East Lagan and things like that. I wouldn't advise someone to come to Jahadzi, you know, just buy out your house. You have your roads, your, your lights, you have all your infrastructure. Uh, the community project that we have, and that's why I make sure that we have details to where the community contract people read it and then they sign it and it tells them that we all have to participate and that what we're dealing with is raw land that we are going to develop from the ground up. So I started showing people the land uh, over three years ago. And um, me personally, I think we've made great progress because the issue in Ghana is sometimes paperwork and delay. Uh, so I'm always telling everyone this, that while we're doing this, the goal is we're working to perfect a system that we can make work. And if we're going to build the real estate operation that we want, and that's why I'm here in Zebo, work it to where you know, we just made a sacrifice and that office is there and we're going to figure some other things out to where it could be effective to where when once more and more members come there, they can always just go there, check in with, you know, check in at the office and anything that we may need help with, you know, anyone that can come there and, and give some assistance and things like that, that's always helpful uh, because it's, uh, you know, it's really tricky to pull us off, but we have worked it out. I mean, uh, between working the office operation in Georgia and Jahadzi in the community, we've been able to just handle things consistently. Uh, so more progress is coming. Um, our surveyor is working on final paperwork to get all of the new people their surveys and their deed of assignment. And then our goal is to work on closing out final registration so people could have their title and deed. But these are things that it sounds nice and simple, but something like a survey can take three to six months uh, and it's unfortunate uh, but we're not dealing with a situation where you know like the county i'm in or the state of georgia i've had people come over here we sit down and by the time we do all the business paperwork within a few days it gets sent to their email and then they're in business they can go to the bank they can get their bank account and they can start working on things or even if they need paperwork as far as this to build you know to build apartments because here in this town here in this uh, city or in this county, it's frustrating because it's like you get up every day and you're here and then you see, like I've seen about seven land clearing and I've been frustrated. I was like, I was like, yeah. and I know who's clearing the land. Uh, they're clearing the land because they, they wanna build more apartments and more condos here, but it's not people like myself are putting the money together and that becomes frustrating. So what we realize is that we can do the same thing that they do in this county, but we have to work it out in a country like Ghana because all the things that you need up front from the bribe money to the license and things like that, it's not going to be like the cost of what we've been able to work out in Ghana. It's going to be big, heavy money. And that's why real estate development and land acquisition and things, most of us don't even find ourselves in those conversations. 
But I'm telling people like we've been able to work that in Ghana. And even when I was explaining to my family in New York, um, because they just love New York. Where I left when I was 18. I'm 45 now. And they're still there. And but my family also put their money down and we have lots. And I'm telling them it's not something that, you know, I'm saying to you to give up everything that you have in America and move to Ghana and there's things like that. This is a situation where we have set up to where we can work the movement smooth. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, when I was communicating with Azebo, we have a family of five uh, that's coming, um, husband, wife, and three children. Uh, my good brother was able to talk to the manager that's right there at our office that uh, managed the property because the property that we're talking about where we have our office, it's not on our physical community land. The goal is to build a business center and community center and security place and everything. But that comes with us working to get the money together, whether it's grants, loans, or working contracts, or basically black corporate economics, doing the same thing that we've done from the beginning, which we put our money together and that's how we got the land, that's how we got things handled, that's how we got attorneys, consultants, and all the people that you'd need to make this business work because you need all kinds of people to watch your back and look out to make sure that the decision you're making is you're not gonna put yourself and other people in certain situations. Uh, so that's what we've been able to really just uh, get going. Uh, so uh, what I wanna do now is just um, do a nice uh, screen sharing because a lot of times people are watching these things and I wanna show them the documentation that we have that we can send to them via email and the newsletter, which is available on our website that we can also send. All right, perfect. So I'm hoping that everybody can see uh, this email. So this email is called Join Black Star Pan-African Community in Ghana, Getting Started Process with Membership Application Requirements, Bylaws, Overview, Sample, and more. Phase one and phase two plots already for purchase. So that's a long subject, but um, it just uh, get right to the point. And then the first thing you're looking at is, you're looking at a bunch of JPEG files, and then the ones below, you're looking at a bunch of PDF files. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down and show you where it tells you what all of these files are. All the files are titled itself, but once you scroll down past all of the, the financial costs of the land, which is very important that everybody is clear on so they can see that it's always in the documentation and it's not something that we change our minds or make up uh, later on. So as far as the attachment, these are the attachments. I know it's like a long list of things, but I don't really know any other way how to fight corruption uh, other than being organized strategic and tactical. Uh, so when we're having these conversations, even on YouTube, I'm telling people that we have to make better decisions. Um, put the pressure on the person that you're dealing with to give you upfront information, answer all and every single last question you have. Don't give them a dollar. And I'm dead serious with that because it becomes a situation where it's just money, 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 and not getting the job done and not doing what we need to do to step up the standards and step, you know, you know, we, we talk about operating with the high level of, you know, of black excellence standards and you know, things that I've been able to learn here in, in, in America. And I appreciate um, the aspect of what we have been able to build in America, but I'm basically saying that now it's time to take our black excellence and our professional level on another level to where we can, you know, we can really operate as we need to operate. And uh, there, you know, the last, this whole month is, has been a big conversation about uh, Kanye. I've, I've said different things in different aspects, but everything that I would always say, I'll put it in proper perspective and things like that, because it's a serious situation. You're, you're in a country, either you play by their rules and follow certain things, or else you're going to have the issues that you're going to have. So you have to make up your decision. Either you're going to flow with the system, or if you're going to go against the system, be prepared for the repercussions, uh, because, you know, you know, this incredible, this wonderful country was built, but didn't have us in mind for us to be who we are today. And now we have to figure it out. So the fight of what we have to do has to take place here. Definitely, because it's hard for me to see past 90, past maybe one to 5% of our people leaving and going anywhere. Uh, so, and then what we have built as a people, now you're telling people like, okay, if we have business enterprises here in America and we build relevant enterprises there in Africa. Now what we have is a global black business pipeline of black people from the Americas and black people from the African continent connecting together and doing things together. 
and trying to get people to do it in the name of pan-Africanism and put their religious views and their political views to the side so we can focus on one common goal. And it's kind of like the white European Jews, they always have like, there's one thing, one or two things that they're always gonna have in common. Number one, it's always gonna be, they're gonna reflect on their Holocaust and they're gonna use it as, the, as a way to be on code and be strong. And that's what I want us to, to do. So when we do these Africa tours, I always make sure that we, we connect people to that experience as far as this, what happened to our ancestors and to build strength in numbers and build energy and go beyond to say, you know, it would, uh, never again, never again. Cause that's what, that's what our, that's what our tour guides sometimes have us saying in dungeons and, and places of African Holocaust. And I'm with it never again, but the never again has to be a practical situation where we're putting our money together and building what we need to build. So in this uh, presentation, the important attached files, uh, information, uh, including legal documents and sample. So one, sample member application in a PDF, and it's also in a Word. Uh, national criminal background. It's an, it's a, this is an example, because we do need background checks from uh, everyone. And it's nothing you know, personal or anything, it's just we just need to see who we're dealing with as a people. And it's not necessarily a situation where if someone as a felony or something, they can't be a part of the community, because not, not all situations are the same and things like that. Uh, but that's not something we push out to kind of throw people off, you know, and you know, I've had people reach out to me and tell me certain things. I was like, you know, it's, 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 you know, that's not a bad situation. Like somebody called me and just told me about uh, some drug stuff that they have on the record. I was like, brother, I'm not a judge. I'm not here to judge people. We just need to know what we're involved in and know that, you know, whatever situations that we did in America, we, you know, we, we completed whatever and we, and, you know, we progressed ourselves, and then since we're moving to the African continent, we're gonna be focused on us working together and not us fighting together and getting the issues with each other. Uh, so um, that's one thing, a membership application in uh, PDF and Word. Now, the first one is uh, a sample application. That's what I have. So the sample application is just showing you how to fill out the application. And it's um, you know, a few pages, but it does have that data that we need because we just wanna make sure that everyone is on the right page with us because the, the community is called Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community. So you tell people that you have to believe in Pan-Africanism and you have to believe in repatriation. Repatriation is a process of us you know, connecting to Africa and building a future for ourselves and literally just you know, reinstating our ancestors' name as, you know, as we as a people are coming back. And as far as this uh, energy of Pan-Africanism, you know, we're trying to connect to this global Black pipeline where we as a people can be on code and work together because everyone else has consolidated their resources. Um, we have presentations that we talk about countries like you know, China, how they was tribalistic and things like that. Now they, now they have one communist party and, that, and it's a dominant force. And through consolidating the languages and their people and things like that, they're able to operate in strong, in strength and strength in numbers. At American Passport Info and Signature page, so the red marks right there will say need to be scanned and look like the example because it's like when you're doing, and I remember just like we do any kind of real estate process here, usually we don't send the real estate company raggedy documents. We usually you know, have them looking nice and professional or sometimes we just bring it down to their office and they just you know, do what they need to do and print it. But in this case, um, we just since we have so many people, so many different parts of the world, we have people from different parts of you know, Europe and different parts of America and the Caribbean and so on. So the easiest thing that we were able to do is just tell people they can send everything digitally uh, to us. A full Black Star Pan-African Community Overview in PDF. Now this is a eight to nine page document that talks about uh, introduction of the community and talks about, it's basically your community contract. Uh, you know, we want everyone to read it and be clear, this is what you know, we're committed in ourselves to. And this automatically puts us on code because it talks about some of the people that we don't want in our community. And I'm always telling people, because you know, when people read things and they realize that <laughs> they think you're excluding them, I'm like, you know, this is not my personal decision. All of us who got together, we explained what we wanted in a community and we explained the issues that we have in the society, especially when we have so much issues with people messing with our children, whether it's mentally or physically and things like that. And we want to make sure that we put ourselves in a community where, you know, we don't have young boys and girls 
growing up now, they're telling people when I was when I was seven, eight, nine years old, somebody did something to me unacceptable. They can't go down on our watch. Um, so we have to really just be about because everything that we're doing um, is for the future of our children and putting them in a better situation where they could compete. Uh, so, you know, up front, you're telling people this is what we believe in and this is what we're working towards and if you feel the same let's connect and if you don't feel the same we don't have to be enemies and we don't have to be bitter against each other you know um like sometimes people have issue with the fact that i have on there that this is for the black pan-african family without saying too much of anything else and then saying the trinity of our operation man woman and child or man woman and children a foundation of just you know what we should operate as now, if people are looking to do different stuff like they got going on here that's acceptable here in America, it's not acceptable in our community. It's just for a straight black Pan-African family. Um, and and then when you read the, um, the overview, you know, you'll be clear because it tells terminology about the people specifically by describing the words that we describe them here and things like that. Uh, so someone told me that I was um, basically antiquated because I didn't want, I, I, because the paperwork say that they're not accepted in the community. And I was like, you know, if you're not accepted in the community, one thing about America, they accept everybody. So you can stay in America, and but don't put yourself in a situation where you try to go do something in Ghana and people find out that you are something else. And it's a little bit different when, you, when it comes to Africa and the Caribbean island. It's not accepted as America. So I'm telling people that we're not here to be disrespectful to our people, but we have to be honest and clear and it's hard for us to build an organization with us thinking about everybody. Like you have so much different groups of black people that ain't about none of the things that we're about. So it's like, we can't force ourselves to connect with them. So that's why I love the space of Pan-Africanism and us going back and forth to Africa and things like that. Cause it creates a special connection for us. It creates a special connection to where, you know, we can do the things that we always wanted to do. And instead of us being on a block where you know, you see your neighbor, hi, bye, because, you know, sometimes you don't trust your neighbor. You don't know who your neighbor is. And you don't know if you, you know, your neighbor, you know, is going to be the one to, you know, to, to, to do something to you or report you and say that you did something. You know, so in this community, you have every one of us, we know each other, we're around each other, and we can literally just be on code together and look out for each other. And that's why we're trying to get more of us to be settled in the community and get the resources that we need to, to build the infrastructure. And also uh, on the community overview is saying that this is the same as the information on the community, on the community, on the community page on the website. Uh, so you may you may see different um, different articles, but by the time you read through all those articles, it's the same as the you know, as a community overview. It's just broken down. The only thing that's not in the community overview is the committees. So the committees have a different link, and bylaws have a different link on the on the site. And those are the only two documents that's not pieced together in the overview. They have their own separate file. So you also see the bylaws. You also see the committee description and importance. And it's all go, I was going to say select at least one and be a part of the committee. Uh, so whether you're retired or not retired is like, you know, we do understand some people are retired and we're not going to put a lot of pressure energy on them. But it's still all hands on deck, just like back in my naval days when you're out there on an aircraft carrier and every every person has to do their job or, you know, we jeopardize ourselves and the ship sinking and all of us dying, which can happen, you know, and, and you know, you have other things to worry about also getting torpedoed. Uh, so, uh, in, and, you know, so you, you're telling people I've seen that world works where, you know, we're under leadership, you know, we uncode and follow what we need to follow and all of us make it back home to see our family. Uh, so this is, so I've taken a piece of a lot of things that we have learned in America from the professionalism to, you know, many wonderful aspects of America, because there's a lot that, you know, we can use from America, not everything that we need. Not, we can't take everything, but there's a lot of things that's important for us to take because our culture matters as far as black people in America. I'm from Jamaica. Some of us are born in America and I'm here working with us and we're all connected and we have been able to build an incredible culture of ourselves, especially like when we talk about Pan-Africanism and black consciousness. So those are that culture we want to keep alive in the community and we want to learn the aspect of what we need to learn in Ghana also. And you know, together that you know, is gonna create a nice cultural strength for our children. Now 15 acre site map, um, uh, it's in JPEG and PDF. So you'll see just the layout 
of actually how it really looks. I even have, um, I even have uh, Google Earth, uh, but that's something that I didn't put in here where you click on it and you actually see on a Google Earth the layout of the land from the 15 acres to the 60 acres to the office. Uh, so those are things that I have on WhatsApp and I usually just send the individuals so they can just get an idea of the location of the area. And when you look at the location of the area, you're gonna see just nothing but land. Uh, so somebody told me that they didn't wanna move there because it's densely populated. I was like, that is the purpose of us moving there because number one, we need more access to land and we need a location where we can bring in a few hundred black folks on the diaspora. And so that town, you know, that town has the space for us. And then the, the, the children of the people left behind who didn't make it to Accra or get certain positions and things like that now, they're in a situation where they can be a part of the, the future with us together to where now, whatever we're teaching or sharing as far as this enterprises, you can, you, you, now you can look at a situation to where you have a young generation of children and Zebo is doing a, a great mission over there with, uh, you know, with, you know, with the, our children, they are a youth, a youth movement. And these are things that we talk about because we always see people like myself at orphanage and schools and supporting that energy because we're gonna have to educate a fresh generation of children to compete at the highest level. You know, some of, after a while, some of our people, you can only do so much because you know, you're stuck in your ways as a, as a people. And that's how it is in the culture of where you are. You know, you've been in that culture. And that's just like us, we're stuck in our ways in some of our culture. So we're trying to work it out to where we can all connect. So that's what the, that layout is about, just to give clarity. Our phase two expansion, 60 acres, the same thing. Um, and then it's broken down into the plots that are available. So for those who want to start building, we do have a few plots on phase one, the 15 acres. And anybody who wants to physically see it, the lots are being cleared and always being maintained and security is also there. And Zebra and Cassandra is there. So when you're even at the office, they'll be able to escort you and show you the land and show you and, you know, and then let you know what's really going on in the town. So uh, you're piecing these things together as we build in this as a real organized movement. Uh, Ghana uh, Certificate of Incorporation. So we're letting people know that uh, we have, you know, we're incorporated in Ghana and then have the US Certification of Incorporation, which is Africa for the Africans. So one company, Black Star, Pan-African community, another one, Africa for the Africans. And that's showing our connection of operating from America and in Ghana. Uh, land lease agreement. So we have a 99 year lease agreement uh, and that's very interesting to read. And it does give you clarity of the agreement. Example of individual plot survey, like I put one of my brothers up here, plot number 46. And uh, when you click on you know, a, a survey, you'll see the signature and the stamp from uh, the Lands Commission. That's, that's on every single last document that we have. So we're telling people in order for you to be able to get this thing done and get it done right, uh, it has to pass to a legal process. And at any point, if something is not correct on the land and there's issues, they're going to tell you to come up there and work it out, or they're going to tell you, you know, they're going to be clear with you, uh, but you're not going to be able to get these legal paperwork if you have issues and problems on the land. And one of the last thing I have is land ownership letters from the chief of Jihad Zinana Haiti uh, in his own words, written, signed and stamped. And, you know, so we create ways to just have a lot of documentation to show that, hey, we're moving in the right direction. Right? And then you also have a cancellation and refund link uh, because it's the nature of the world that we live in. People do change their minds. And, you know, and you always just recommend everyone to stick with the program and keep working and building on it. Now the top right here, it breaks down uh, phase one and two, and it talks about phase three and the vision that we have. Uh, so that's why I'm keeping a good relationship with the chief because they have lots of land. And uh, once we get more investors and more people interested, you know, we can work things out for people. Let's say if somebody wants to build a warehouse or industrial park or do things like that, or build, uh, you know, build beachfront properties, you know, you can work those things now yeah, because you have that connection and you're proving yourself because you know, make sure that the chief and everybody got paid the first time around and you just, you put those things in place to where, you know, it's uh, literally just hundred uh, percent clear. So once you look through the uh, message, uh, it's gonna give you a YouTube link. That YouTube link is gonna take you to all of the videos that we have done uh, from the first conference call, which was uh, in September of uh, 2019, uh, up until you know th this conference call that we're doing that I'll have upload later on. Uh, so. It's meetings, it's presentation, it's uh, land clearing, it's updates on houses, it's uh, aerial view, 
uh, it's interviews, you know, you, we're going into all aspects of uh, showing you what we have done the last three years. Now, some people may say, well, here in America, usually after three years, you know, everything is done and everything. Yes, American people with American money and American resources and things. Absolutely. Uh, what we're doing, and that's why I've always told people up front, it's going to take some time. And the more we can work together, the more we can get it done. Like example, if we had like a small group of people, maybe five people, and their goal was to literally go out there and you know, find investors who wants to build warehouse or factories and do certain things, you know, and we can use some of that profit to invest back in the community. So it's a, it's a profitable situation because it's so much land available, but you know, you can have, like I have a whole bunch of countries that we travel into and we have a whole bunch of land, but without customers and without members and without investors, you're limited on what you can do. So we have to, we do have to put time into building that energy. And scrolling down as I just um, speed up a little bit, uh, it talks about the land costs, $3,000 and um, administrative costs, uh, 500, so that's 3,500. Then you have other costs for your survey and your registration. Uh, so by the time you add that up, that's $4,550. And that's for one plot of 80 by 100. And, but this gives you all of your legal paperwork and everything that you need. So you can literally start building once you get your survey. Now below that, I have another thing, which is the homeowner association fees, $25 a month. And people may say that's not enough. Um, yes, we can say that's not enough, but what we're trying to get things going, it's not, it's not a development budget. Uh, it's more so to make sure that uh, we can maintain, you know, maintain the office, uh, the property, pay for security, and also make sure that um, you know, we can have some reserve cash. So if we need to do certain things, we can get it done uh, without having to just keep on reaching out to people. So the membership dues can be paid. Um, like example, the beginning of next year, people can start, uh, they can do one, 150 in the beginning of the year and then six months later do another 150 or they can just do all of it all together. But we, our goal is to get all of our members to just make that commitment. And then we'll just keep on using the resource and have so more is left over now we can put some of that towards light infrastructure or light development so that is the email that we have and anyone that's interested and need that email sent to them all they have to do is text me or email me and i'll send it and then you just take your time look through it fill out the the, the required information and then use the details that's literally in red highlight on how it should be done like one say mandatory read and sign bylaws for our community group a mandatory read and sign the full community overview. So let's use that as a way to this process it. So that's what I have set up. And the next thing I wanna click over to is a famous, beautiful newsletter. So newsletter is not gonna have these attachments, but what the newsletter is gonna have, it's gonna show some of the documents in the actual newsletter. And we send this out consistent and let people know once you click on it and you just scroll down a little bit, it's going to tell you when the conference call is. It's going to give you this all of the, the documentation, the link, uh, the login information. And then it's telling you to scroll down to so you can see the presentation details as far as the topics. Now, the topics that we have is a lot of topics. So when we do conference calls, we don't always go to this one to 10 or so on. We may just go to a few things because you're just what you're doing is you're doing an overview. But at the same time, too, you're telling everyone that read the email and also read the newsletter and then jot down some questions and then reach out to me and we just have a private call and we'll talk and go through it. That way there's no, mis there's no confusion and, and everything is clear. Now, right here, what you have is um, our consultant on the left, uh, Quabina, we've added another consultant, which is more so working with, uh, working with the registration because he's based out there, not too far from the Lands Commission in Cape Coast. The next person there is a surveyor, but this, that surveyor has been replaced with another surveyor, and we just never been able to get to take the same picture back again. And I know people do the Photoshop, but I've not been able to figure out how to switch him out. So we just consider this guy the surveyor, and then myself in the middle, then our chief in his Kente Clark, beautiful brother. This you know, just you know, I love I love talking with to educated people, you know, and he's you know he's a lawman. He's finishing up his masters and. And people are like, why? You know, because the man believes in education and he wants to see his whole town become educated. Uh, but he realized that they're not gonna, that most of the people in this town don't have that opportunity. 
So when he heard that we we're interested in being a part of his town and everything, he was really just happy and excited because he realized that, you know, men have been talking about the struggles that we have in America. And I'm always telling people that you know, America is not bad. So I'm not trying to like down America. I'm just trying to explain that we're limited on some of the things that we want to do. Just like I mentioned, like right down the street, they're clearing, they're clearing, <laughs> they're clearing about 15 to 20 acres. And those apartments and those houses are going to look nice because I've literally been in this county long enough to see the county go from a whole lot of land to new houses and new developments. And, you know, because you're here, you're driving around and you see it. Uh, so it's been a level of inspiration for me to do this because I realized that I would have to go to a whole bunch of hoops and things and, and figure it out. And then at the same time, too, other people are going to be competing for the land. And they're like, we're not going to let you get this land. This, you know, we have, we, have, we have real business and invest in people with, with big money to do this. So, you know, you're, you're, you're cut out a lot of opportunities. And that's why we use corporate economics. And the more we can use that here in America, the better. But it seemed like we're not really on code to use that. Like my good brother, Amos Wilson, you know, one of my favorite books of all time, you know, Blueprint for Black Power. Uh, that's I use a, a lot of information in this book to create some of the things that we have done in Africa as far as presentation and uh, and programs. All right, so certificate of incorporation. Uh, that's us right there, uh, right there, our, our last group uh, in front of our business office. So I'm always telling people that um, Azebo can get you one of these units. It's three bedroom and it's a uh, two bathroom, and you know, basically. If, you know, just to just give a, a price about twelve hundred US dollars a year, so you can say one thousand, or you can say one hundred US dollars a month. So that's not bad. Um, so if you're looking to move to Ghana, instead of going to um, go somewhere like Isagon, well, first of all, Isagon has everything there, so you're not paying twelve hundred to two thousand a year. You're now paying six to ten thousand dollars a year for your rent. And for the most part, you have to pay that rent up front. Some people, I've had people pay two years up front rent to where, you know, they, they're dropping, you know, they're, they're paying somebody 20,000 US dollars. Now, what happens after those two years? If you didn't make your money and build what you needed to build in Ghana, you're not going to be able to redo that rental. So the thing that we we're telling people, invest the money in the land and then take your time and build it up little by little and We'll, we'll keep on building more people in the town to where we can all work together. And this is a great start. The, 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 the actual office only been around since uh, December. I think uh, we got it like before or after Christmas, but I was there in December 29, December 29 last year. And that was the first time then we it was back again in May 29, May 29th. Uh, so those are the two dates that we have set to go to the land, um, May 29th and December 29th. And our goal is to usually do presentation to the highest level. The chief wasn't around um, and usually is around to where we can work together and do a presentation and you invite the town in. So some of the presentations you'll see on the video link, you'll see the chief, you'll see the community, you'll see us going around telling the chief that while we're here for and we're introducing ourselves. I mean, nice. And then even we took ride down to the beach all the time. And the first time I went to the beach, it was real nice and clean because that was before the COVID era. Uh, so we're showing people the potential of that area. And in order for us to understand it, we just have to be visionaries uh, because I've seen Ghana grow from the neighborhood I'm talking about that's very expensive. It wasn't that expensive when I was there in Ghana 16 years ago, but it's like, so when you realize the trend and you see the development coming, uh, the development coming from Accra into our direction and it's coming from Cape Coast, Elmina into our direction. And I'm telling people this, the part that we're in, the development haven't hit, but once it hit, Everything is going up and then you're going to have more people moving to that area. And I'm telling people literally once when I first went there, like almost none of the stuff that I see there in the town now existed because what, what people are waiting for is like was once one person get land and start making certain moves, then other people are coming. So as we build, we'll have more people coming. You know, next thing you know, you have the things that you don't have in the town, gas station, supermarket, but people ask me, well, that's not, that's not in town. Where can I get access to that? Well, Winneba is close by. Right. Um, and scrolling down some more documentation and you know that's what we do links facebook page youtube page documentation on the website uh, so that's all that about is about and this is um, our nice little layout of how the property look and and this is just our uh, design uh, so we have homes being built on a few plots and we have we're, we're getting the last of the people their legal paperwork and trying to encourage them to build
a 15 acre survey. And when you're looking at surveys, you know, you're looking for the top, making sure everything is consistent. But then the most important thing that you're looking on the survey, you're looking for these stamps and then you're looking to make sure that it says Lands Commission and you're looking for the dates and you're looking to make sure that the people who run the Lands Commission, their signature is actually on there. And if you feel any kind of way, you can just go up to the Lands Commission and, and just get us to them and say, you know, is this correct? And I'm saying that for people who don't know us and because you know, most of the people that we that we have in our communities, people that we have traveled with and we have known for a while and the trust has been able to build, you know, they traveled with me on tours, the bus was there, hotels was there, the food was there, the sites, the guide, the staff. And then when they do land with me, you have your paperwork, you have the land and, you know, you're just kind of working it and getting those things in place. And scrolling down some more uh, conference topics. And it's similar to uh, the email as far as updates on the community. And when I, once um, Zeba and Dr. Cassandra get on, they can also uh, talk about some of the things. Uh, but I'm just scrolling through uh, to show you know, the same level of documentation as far as the cost and everything and the uh, homeowners association. So you, you see this information on multiple documentation. So you're hoping that, you know, that people don't miss it on both documentation. So this is the next one, the 60 acres, and the same thing too. You're looking to make sure that all of these paperwork are stamped and correct. And you know, no one gives you these safe surveys of paperwork. You know, uh, you have to pay the chief, you have to pay and you have to, you know, and they also have to have some level of trust in you that you're not gonna come and bring a bunch of uh, people to take over their town and disrespect their people. Uh, so it's a relationship that, uh, you know, we're all working together and trying to connect ourselves. And so that's what that office is there. The office is there also for public relations and, and letting people know that, you know, we're here in the town and we have all good intentions. We wanna contribute to making this beautiful town a pan-African town where it could be a headquarters for, if some of us fall on our luck in Ghana and things go wrong, I'm telling people, it's my heart has been broken from seeing friends become homeless, friends literally lose everything that they, they work for and get, get there, but it, it, it's gonna happen unless we operate in union. So that's why I'm always talking about the community. And that's why I'm always pushing for people to, if they don't join the community, that's fine. But I'm always telling them, make sure that you have a unit of people from America and a unit of people from Ghana, that we all believe in the same thing. You know, because the visionaries have to work together to where we can make sure that we have everything in place for our children. I have more Lands Commission docs, uh, sign and stamp, uh, a letter from uh, you know, Nana Haiti, talking about the land that he signed over to us and things like that. And, you know, a few videos that uh, we have uh, shown people, like showing people the real dirt road. Like I told people that before it was a jungle and then once we brought bulldozers through, we created dirt roads. Now dirt roads is fine for now, but we do wanna work with people who can help us lay things out to where next thing you know, we're building a road from where the office is, just right up to the, the community. And it's a nice smooth road to where when it, when the rainy season happened, all of this doesn't become mud to where now your bus and your supply people can't go. Uh, so those are still things that uh, we have to figure out. And scrolling down, this is literally the, uh, the committees that uh, we want to reboot. And once we get some more people focused, we can all just start doing committees. And these committees are set to where once we physically get there in the town and it's a bunch of us, we're all on code on what we're supposed to be working on, on what we can work on together. And you know, the, the titles of the, the, um, the committees, um, they, they represent 100% of what we have to focus on working on. Work on. So let me just uh, go through the business and professionalism, professional affairs, safety, security, and surveillance, education, culture, and social affairs, sustainable energy and utilities, medical and wellness, planning and development, maintenance and landscaping, Waste management and recycling, agriculture and livestock, bylaws and homeowners affair. Uh, so these are our committees that we have. You know, we have group pages for them on WhatsApp, and then you know, once we have members that's interested in any of these committees, we just kind of add them. And then the goal is for you know one or two members in the committee to literally just communicate with everyone else. And then if we need to have conference calls or private dialogue, you know, that group work on certain things. And then when we connect on a conference call where all of us talk, then we can say. Hey, I'm representing the agriculture and livestock. These are the findings that we have on how we can make it work. Uh, so the breakdown kind of also just gives the explanation of what we're doing. 
And that's our, you know, first uh, people that moved on the land, Leonard and Carmen, they literally came to Ghana with me in December 2019. And then literally a year later, they were actually living in the country. And, um, you know, we, we had our first, we had our builder literally start building their house. Uh, so I'm telling people, for the people who actually want to do these things, and then Kamau is also on a call, we have, you know, build this home. Um, and these are the visionaries, and that's why I want to make sure that we do a lot more because, you know, none of us want to just be on the land by ourselves, you know, you know, but it's hard to just build 50 houses at one time uh, without a proper game plan. But the goal now is to encourage more of us to build and uh, let everyone know that we have security, we have a better presence on the land, and uh, we're working out situations with the chief and the people on the land so we can all look out for each other. One of my favorite uh, meetings right here. That's me right there hanging out by the chief and things like that. And later on, we went and took those pictures. And, uh, you know, we just, you know, we did a little uh, private talk and the attorney was with us and, you know, and we're talking about numbers and how we can work this out and everything. And I was telling the chief, I was like, yo, I love this energy, this uh, town and everything. But like any other decisions, I need to process everything because it's a lot of responsibility. And all, the, all of the people that's in the picture, they're dependent on me to make sure that we do things right. Uh, so... And this right here is just talking about the, the previous vision that we had uh, when we first started. And uh, we have even some Facebook uh, link of some of the photos and videos that I was that was sent to me. And then, you know, you can just, and I was like, I was looking at in the videos and I was like, wow, this town is clean. This is before I actually went there. And then when I went there, I was like, I'm going to verify this town is clean. So I was walking around, I was looking in the gutter and I went down to the beach, walking around, making sure that the beach wasn't filthy and it was a pristine. Uh, the situation has changed since the COVID-19 era because People weren't out, you know, even the city I live at, the city right here is usually clean, but it's like the people that normally out cleaning up and doing things, you know, it just threw them off. So now we're getting back to where, you know, we're going to clean up the beach and clean up the town and make it look good. And then when we're there physically living, you know, I like what they're doing in Rwanda. And I want to, you know, do, do it like once or twice a month, you know, myself out there. And, you know, I tell people that I lead by example, I'll be out there and I'll be in the gutters pulling out trash and everything. And I'll be, you know, and it's a somewhere, some, it's a situation where we can literally just, you know, build something special. And that's what I love about that town. And as I'm scrolling down, uh, another thing that we do is uh, we do repatriation investment conference call. The last one I did was uh, December last year. We didn't have the group size we had to do one of these conferences because, you know, you need the group size because it's, it's, you know, it's a, it's a business conference and costs and everything. Uh, then we've, we've even had... Uh, citizenship conference where we're talking about how we can get citizenship and what came out of that was we worked out a good situation on how we can get residency and the citizenship part you know we're still working that out with our partners our first time on the physical land and family it was like a, like like a little jungle and now you look at it it just looks clear and beautiful so we're learning land development from the ground up the first house that's been built, when you go there now, it's a wall around it and they've touched it up and they're doing some farming and it looks real nice. Uh, this is a land project that we was at before this one, uh, but this was one of my Jamaican brothers and we just wanted to you know, do up our Trinity sign and show our, you know, our, our Pan-African uh, uh, t-shirts and just let people know that, hey, you know, you, you, you know, you're dealing with a situation where we're going to literally figure it out and we're showing the land that uh, we're working with people before, you know, they were called Garvey Town. Uh, but unfortunately, they weren't serious about what they're doing and things like that. And, you know, you can't work with a group of people that's not serious. So we literally just end up this, based on my experience of helping so much people try to get their land developed by bringing groups of people there and it not materialize. And I was like, you know what, might as well we keep everything in-house and build up our own development. And to my, and, and basically what you, we have been able to do is I've outdone all these other people that say that they can't get people and no one wants to invest and no one wants to do certain things. But I'm telling them, I was like, if you are 100% unorganized, do you think people are going to really take you serious? If you can't even structure emails and have presentations and, you know, address information to where once you present to us, it's 100% clear. So what I was telling them is like, you know, I record everything. So I was like, I got you guys on this recording saying this, and then I got you guys on another recording saying this. What really is it? Uh, so... But nevertheless, uh, you know, you progress through your trials and tribulation, which is one of my long live stream calls that we did last night on YouTube live. You know, we, and we're telling people that these trials and tribulations make us stronger. And, you know, when we think about even Garvey, look at what, you know, 
their whole movement at the go-to. So we're picking things up a hundred years later and we're taking it to that next level. And this right here is a, uh, talking about consultation. So I'm telling people uh, they never been to Africa and they need help and they don't want to go on a group, uh, group tour, reach out to me and you know, we have staff in every country because if we're doing tours in every country, those same staff will help individuals and small families. Uh, so he's just talking about all the things that we can help uh, people get and get done efficiently. And, and Kamal, this is your foundation of your house, man. And the fact that it's just developed and beautiful. And this is what you see in older pictures, even if you're on the Facebook group page and you click on photo gallery, you see four different galleries over the last times that we have been there in the community. And what you'll see is raw land and you see houses going up, you see a level of progress. So that's the good thing about uh, documenting everything via video and photos. All right, and I'm just gonna finish scrolling now. These are just tour groups that we had and just showing people that um, you know, we built our reputation and every single last one of these groups, it requires you to do administration to the highest level and you have to take care of everything for everyone and help people with their visas, passport and get things done. And we even create digital and printed uh, tour books so I'm telling people that we're serious about what we're doing and we're connecting the energy of two business enterprise that we have built, Africa for Africans and Black Star Pan-African community. And the rest of the stuff is about uh, tours and links. So we kind of put all these things together and then and that's our social page link. So those are um, the email and the newsletter. But let me just uh, stop, uh, I can show you more, but uh, let me uh, switch over and just show you quick what we have on the website once you click on Black Star Pan African Community. Similar files, and you can see by the titles and the name. And the getting started is what you would see when you in the email where the prices are broken down. And then while you're on our website, you know, you just look to the left on the main menu and you can just click on the Black Star link. If you're looking for the newsletters, we have a bunch of newsletters, uh, Africa Tours and Investment, which include the Black Star community. And once you click on the link, you'll see all of the uh, newsletters that uh, you know, we have added over a period of time. And that's one of our brochures that uh, we have a um, you know, brochure flyer and it just gets right to the point and give the connection to where people just need to call us and we just highlight some of our you know, different groups that we have and put on there. And the backside of it, you, know, you see the legal documentation and a few things that we've talked about. So, we're always building presentation. And then the YouTube page, you go there, you scroll down tours, then you have Black Star Pan African community here. And you click on the link and you load it up and you're like, and then you look at the top and you scroll all the way down to the bottom. I mean, it shows right there, 128 videos. And then if people are looking at it, they'll see constant conference calls on a regular basis. It's showing the commitment that we're always making ourselves available. Um, and these are all of the incredible presentations that we talk about on the land, here, in dialogue, interviews. And it just goes down and down. I'm trying to get to the part where it shows the beach. All right. Those are the, those are the areas is unbelievable something all right perfect the last set of photos down here are with the beach and you'll see how clean it looks it looks completely different from what it is um now uh and our attorney introduced himself the chief introduced himself so these are like the foundation of how we just connect and like when when all of us met some of us was meeting for the first time and you know we all did our presentation and that's where all these links and details are, and some of them are short videos and some of them are long. The presentations are long, but the videos on the land are you know, very short. So that's what we have right there, family. And then our Black Star Pan-African community page, uh, where I was mentioning that uh, all you have to do is click on like media, and then you click on albums, and then that's it right there. May, 20, May 2022, December 2021, May 2021, December 2020, and December 2019. So those are the five times that I've brought groups to the country over the years since we have started this community. And then one of my favorite videos, the land clearing photos and everything. Uh, so 
that's our documentation family. And we're just showing everybody what we're really about. That way everyone can kind of see that we're serious about this business that we're building. Uh, so family, appreciate um, everyone holding on. Uh, the presentation took longer than I thought, but I just want to make sure that, especially for the new people, that we're showing them the things that we're talking about. So Baba Azibo and Dr. Cassandra, if you both can unmute yourself. All right, so how both are you doing? I'm doing very well. And I just want to thank you and want to just express how I feel on a recorded call um, that, you know, what, you, what both of you are doing, um, you know, it's, it's, it's legendary. And, you know, I know people like, well, Boman, you're there in a comfortable space with all this technology and everything. And they're there in Africa. Yes, we, we haven't had the things that's here, there yet. But one of the things I did want to talk to both of you about, I uh, do need to get a printer scanner uh, like one of the ones I have here, which is not bad. Like this one is $200. It's an HP. I just have to figure a way to get it uh, to you and get additional ink and get uh, paper and everything. Just like you know, a normal office setup. Uh, so bear with me um, as we work to get more things in place. And But at the same time, too, we want to show people that we started with an empty office. And uh, we're, we're building it up together little by little. So I just want, since both of you are on the ground on a regular basis, uh, just share some updates and some positive updates as far as if the people if the people are connecting more with us based on the public relations and what both of you are doing in the schools and orphanage and other places like that and and then just you know give us some updates as far as how the land looking with clearing and security and um, and also share any vision that both of you have on how we can make things more efficient in the at the office and how we can work more with our members that are there in the town or in Ghana itself for them to show some level of energy and help us with the movement that we're doing there. Okay, I'll go first. Uh, I'm really excited about the uh, development that's going on. I know when I first got here, it was uh, very interesting because I was looked at as a white person. And that would upset me, but I had to learn that they have not actually learned about our plight having left the continent years ago. And uh, I was able to write a proposal and Baba uh, Lazibo and I were now able to go into the schools. And this has really changed a lot of things because now when we go to town, more people are waving at us and smiling at us. I've gone to some of the establishments uh, in the around the junction, and I can they would tell me, "Oh, I heard you were teaching to children today." So that's a good thing. I've also visited one of the nursery schools here. I guess you could call it preschool, and they are in serious need. I just I. Heard the children crying one day, and I just walked up quietly to see what was going on. And here they're trying to teach two, three, four year olds all the way up to nine years old English, but these children are also having to learn two other dialects and languages. So here you've got your nursery school children having to, to speak three languages, and they need to learn how to speak these languages. And this is really hard when you don't have manipulatives, when you don't have the um, right equipment to work in the schools. So now, since I've taught what, three lessons, I think three, yeah, we'll see, yeah, three, three. three full lessons, non-formal lessons. We've been to the schools and talked to them before, but the last few weeks, Baba Azibo and I, we've been in there and taught full lessons. The, the students, are coming to the house on their own. So I believe now we can begin to work with our youth. And one thing I've learned is here in Ghana, youth start at the age of about 13 and it goes up to 35. So we will be able to work with the older or young adults uh, more now since the children are coming to our house. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh... Dr. Cassandra is uh, she's doing she's doing a great job in terms of the uh, presentation as far as getting 
our point across and the reason why we are here. A, a lot of, uh, most of the uh, time uh, that we were here uh, was uh, people, people just didn't know who we were and why the reason why we, we were here. Um, uh, it's, uh, her presentation to the school and to the, uh, to the youth of uh, the community was uh, opened a lot of uh, doors as far as our relationship to the overall community. M my approach was to uh, use the uh, youth movement as an integration platform to infiltrate into the community, to integrate into the community as far as the uh, Black Star Pan African community was, was concerned. Uh, when, when I first got here, I was been trying to figure out a way that we could integrate into the community without, uh, in, in a constructive kind of way. And uh, I kept hearing the, the uh, slogan, uh, Africa is the future. Africa is, is the future. In, in what way? I mean, how can Africa be the future if, if the children, uh, you know, if, if, it's, if it doesn't include the youth? You know, you, you think in back of resources and things of that sort, but the, the greatest resource that Africa has is the minds of our youth. You know, and, you know, we talk about our youth all the time, but if we don't include it, then how can Africa be the future? You know, uh, our, our lives is, is uh, we, we, we're uh, uh, revamping our uh, lots over in the uh, development area. Uh, uh, we, we've been going through different uh, phases and different uh, changes as far as the foliage is concerned. Uh, we've been uh, foliage and uh, the reason why they call it the bush is because grass grows very rapidly here. You know, one day if the grass is short, then the next couple of days you go back and if the grass has grown two or three, two or three feet, you know. And it's, it's all it's, it's all because of the rains. Uh, it's been raining a lot here. Uh, the rainy seasons, it changes up. Um, they have a, a system here called slash and burn. And I learned that in, in uh, my geology classes, uh, hunter gatherer uh, type of thing. And, uh, they're still using that technique here uh, to clear the land. Um, uh, we've cleared uh, about we started out clearing about 60% of the land. And then um, uh, we, we uh, got two people to work at night for security. And then they cleared the rest of uh, the percentage of the land. We, we have uh, plot markers uh, which, are, which are made out of concrete that needs to be re redone over. Simply because uh, the village had, had overgrown the plot markers, he couldn't see. What we're dealing with is uh, the land is uh, virgin land. You know, it's like it's like no, it's not like like land in in the U.S. or land in an area where uh, you know uh, uh, is is now I call it tame. Tame. It's not tame land. It's virgin land. It's land that has never been built on, uh, never had any modern structures built on it ever, ever at all. And, 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 we're, and I call myself a pioneer. I call Dr. Cassandra a pioneer because we're doing something that has never been done before in this area. And uh, we're, we're bringing Pan Africanism to this area. We're bringing uh, the ideas of Marcus Garvey to this area. 
We have people, we have individuals here that has never heard of Marcus God, never heard of Martin Luther King or Malcolm X or W.E.B. Du Bois. In fact, they, they don't even teach uh, a decent uh, history of, of Africa itself to the students in this area. So we, we are, we're charging, uh, we're charging, what do they say? We're charging uh, waters that have never been uh, treaded upon. So uh, we, we, we are pioneers in, in the true sense of the word. Oh, see, we can't do it alone. We, we need help. We need help in terms of uh, leadership training. And the, these people, these are the, these young people here. They're not dumb. They, they are. They're very smart. And they pick up, you know, the average uh, the average person here uh, speaks three languages, a minimum of three, if not four or five. You know, uh, so. You're not dealing with any dummies, you know. So what we what we need to do is open up this genius, open open up this African genius, so that we can begin moving this whole area forward. Uh, my my prediction to the uh, the we call it the best thing is happening for Black Star Pan African community. We call it best pack economic youth movement. And uh, my prediction is this, is that once we teach these young people how to, how to start their own businesses, uh, be a basic uh, of entre entrepreneurship, that this, this thing is gonna take off like wildfire. Um, we, have a, we have a program that they, they've already came They've already started coming to the uh, office. Uh, we we want to set up a, a movie uh, for Friday, Friday, Friday movie night. Friday movie night, and that's a way for us to uh, uh, collect, uh, you know, it's the CD to get in, collect funds. Uh, it's a, a way for us to educate the uh, youth uh, about who Marcus Garvey really was. Pan Africanism, and, you know, I'm jumping back and forth on, on the land, and I'm jumping back and forth in terms of the you know, students, the class, classroom, uh, you know, taming the, the uh, land that we have to develop an area as far as uh, Black Star is concerned. Uh, um, the, uh, we, are, we, are, we put two uh, security guards on on duty at night. Uh, Azibo, speak closer into the mic so we can have consistency. Yeah, uh, we, we, put, we put two uh, security guards uh, on duty, uh, on night duty. They are on our payroll. Uh, they're consistently being paid every, uh, you know, uh, for, for their, their work uh, at night. Um, maybe later on, we'll, we'll switch up and and put one on day and one on night. But what I want to do is get the us uh, the uh, turn the security guard duty into a security company. They call it the um, um, Black Star Security uh, Force. Excellent. And, uh, what I want to do is get the security company registered as as an official full fledged security guard company, so that we can. We can uh, uh, create a uh, 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 cash flow for for this this office, and uh, also uh, create jobs for for the community. Um, another thing that I'm doing, I just opened up two spaces uh, in so-called in, in the uh, Jahazi Junction, which will be the first. Uh, first restaurant uh, in Jahaz, in the village of Jahaz, and I'm calling it uh, Azibo's Cuisine Restaurant. 
which will feature uh, jerk chicken sandwiches uh, in a uh, traditional uh, Ghanaian uh, uh, cuisine, which is jollof rice, uh, fufu, and, and uh, you know, bangu, and things of that sort. And uh, uh, a member of our youth group uh, had an idea to invent well, we invented some ice cream. We call it uh, a dream cream. And uh, next to my, my restaurant will be uh, an ice cream, uh, an ice cream parlor, which we call a uh, dream cream ice cream factory. And that's, that's a first for this area also. So, you know, we, we are breaking ground uh, and we are living up to uh, our name as uh, pioneers, revolutionary pioneers. Uh, and we are laying down the groundwork for many more people to come. You know, uh, just like uh, uh, Brother Bobani was saying, you know, these things take time. You uh, know, we gotta get past all of the, so to speak, bull crap. I, I want to say something else, but you know, well, well, we we are making progress, and uh, this this whole program that Bomani has introduced to this area is going to explode. He's talking he's talking about pioneering, and uh, he's talking about uh, empire building. I'm pretty sure this 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 is going to explode into something that's going to just take. It. This whole area, God of my storm, and eventually it's gonna it's gonna go throughout the whole continent of Africa itself. So back to back to you, brother. I uh, yes, appreciate H man. Appreciate appreciate the updates, uh, brother, and uh, back to gallery view. Uh, so family, uh, that's our, you know, that's our trials and tribulations of building uh, this community. And I would say that, you know, our prog progress of what we're doing and not just trying to compare ourselves to everyone else. Uh, we have separated what we're about and how we do it compared to what other people are doing. Because I do believe that, you know, you do need to just take things to another level. Uh, so appreciate all the people that have been committed and sticking with what we're doing. Because Ultimately, everything that we're doing is, is a long-term game plan. It's a generational game plan. It's not this us, uh, you know, it's not like this us having a job and then you retire from the job and then you know, now you just go relax and chill. Um, it's a mindset that we have to have to where, like we are saying, if you're retired, we're not trying to put a bunch of pressure on you, but we do need all hands on deck. And if more and more people contribute to, from the basic, even just getting on calls, and find out what's going on and things like that will change the dynamics of things. But the issue that we will always have is the fact that while we were in America, most people weren't a part of like black organizations that were effective and didn't really build an energy of how to work with other black people. So I didn't organically expect that um, a group of us as individuals would just figure this thing out overnight and we just gel together. You know. And some people, they were excited and they loved what we we're talking about. But as soon as we start talking about the work, like I've been working on this for three years and I'm drained, drained completely. And so I did enough to get us this far. And now when I'm telling people like your family, we need you to help us participate. If you're in the country on the land, go holla to Zebo. I mean, Zebo K, I don't know how you find all this energy to do all the things that you do, brother. Uh, but um, and, and you know, but I'm just thankful for you because I've told you about people who have had that position as vice president. You're the only person that have came through. Um, I've had one person. Uh, you know, we had two sisters that were vice president, and they 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 spent more time trying to fight with the survey and the chief. The chief and the survey is who they are as a people, and they're gonna operate and do things and how they do it, and then having issues with the the attorney and the consultant. Uh, you know, your, our job is not to fight with those people and, you know, Zebo get it. And that's why when we made the, uh, the ultimate sacrifice to build that office, that was the only person I can think 
to be there. And, you know, at the same time too, we want people that are working with us and committed to us to, you know, we want to make sure we take care of things for them. And as Ibo always know, man, me and him work very effectively. I mean, uh, is it always perfect? But, you know, we've been able to grow and work together. And he's been able to really just build that position there and handle things. And, uh, you know, even when we're creating opportunities, like I tell people, if you need a rental there or you need certain things, now we have services where someone like Azebo, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's a real estate transaction of a processing charge to help get things set up for you. If you're, if you're building a house and you're not there and you want him or the security guys to kind of take extra, you know, extra lookout for you and work with your builder to where they're taking pictures and videos, then you can pay our brother there, pay the office. And that way the office can make some, you know, make some income. And then, you know, what our brother is doing, he's turning around trying to uh, build, you know, all the things he mentioned to you, he's there in the town doing it, uh, showing me pictures and videos. And that's where we want to be. We want to be to where once, one after, once we're in the community, now we're focusing on business enterprising inside of the community and outside of community, but in the town in general. So since I went to a, a long presentation, I want to open things up uh, for the people who, uh, you know, just came on the call uh, for the first time. And also I see uh, my sister, Dr. Leonora Austin in the call. Greetings, my sister. Um, I communicated with a survey. He started sending me some of the, you know, some of the deed of assignment and also the survey. So I'm hoping that we can get yours taken care of, that he can send me yours tomorrow or the next day because he promised Monday. Uh, that way I can update you and see if anyone else is on the call. Uh, Prince Charles, <laughs> I also submitted yours. Um, and, you know, that, that, that way we can get a bunch of them out at one time. Uh, so looking forward to putting together the email and sending it to you with your legal uh, documents and things like that to where you can start making your plans. And as I mentioned, uh, we do have builders um, and uh, my good brother, uh, Prince, uh, Prince Charles, if you're available, you know, uh, later on, you can share with us um, some of the things you and I talk about as far as trying to get builders to give you prices and CDs and trying to make sure that um, we're not being overcharged for every little thing. And then my good brother Kamal uh, is on the call and he's building his house and everything. And uh, we wanted to let him know that um, you know, we have his best interest. And you know, as he would talk about the consistency of security, you have to have security in these, um, in these situations because you have open land and people just, people just do, do, do stuff where you just, you know, you don't get it, but you do understand that, you know, people are seeing us as a, these group of people from somewhere else. And for the most part, people think we're rich. You know, you come in there, you look, you're all shiny and everything. Uh, but the public relations that they're doing in the community is going to change things. So that's why we need to have aspects of people in a different country. And that's what I'm telling people that we've built an enterprise where we have people here in America and we have people there in Ghana and other countries. Uh, so Prince Charles, before you uh, get in, I want to know if Darren, Mario, I see Carol, and I see a few other, few, a few other people on there. Uh, I see my brother uh, Carla on there. Uh, so I want to know if anyone um, who just came on the call from the beginning of the presentation have any questions in reference to the, the information I went over from the uh, email, the newsletter, the uh, Facebook page, the YouTube page, the documentation on uh, YouTube. Hey, but hey, Bomani, I just want to say thank you because I'm, I'm, that's good news about the survey, waiting a long time for it. And yes. so, will I get a copy of it? Oh, yes, absolutely. I'll email it okay. to you and if it's, and even, even send you the draft on your uh, WhatsApp. Uh, just okay. to get around to get these things done. And uh, being honest, I had, to, I had to put a whole lot of work into dealing with the surveyor to get him to goodness. convince him to come back. And I was explaining to him, just like we talked about last night on our long conference called Trials and Tribulation of uh, Pan-Africanism and Nation Building. Uh -huh. And the pressure is real. And I do understand some people, like I was telling people that one of our attorneys quit. Uh, but it's like, you know, if all of this was that simple, we just have it all built. But it's like the trials and tribulation we go through, we have to stay strong and stay committed with each other. And I know not everyone has patience to, to hang in there, but I'm telling people, uh, we have had people who have left the group. They have went to Rwanda. They went to Tanzania. They have went to the Gambia. And I'm not talking their business and saying that they failed there, but they thought that they can just go somewhere else and, and do this, or they can go somewhere else. And just, you know, that person and their wife or 
that person and their friend can figure out all the things that we're talking about. And I tell them that if you want to just go to a country like the Gambia and buy a house or rent a house, you can do that easy. But that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is real estate development. I'm talking about, like I'm telling you, it psychologically affects me every time I drive down the street and every time I go that other direction and I go that direction, I go that direction. Because all you see, because I'm promising you within a few months, everything will be built right there and everywhere else. Because I've seen it, this, I've driven by places where I come back a month later and a whole block is built. I don't, uh-huh. know, if, I don't know if it's Mexicans from outer space that came and literally built it, uh, but it, it gets done here and, and effective and they're serious. And I'm learning more about what we do in real estate development here and trying to add it to what we can do in Africa. And part of the thing that we have to fix is when we can get our paperwork and things on time, ahead of time, because sometimes if someone has to wait six months, then you turn around and you get a message from them. You know what? I'm tired of this, man. I, I, I want a refund. I don't want to deal with you guys anymore. And I was like, but it's not my fault. I'm not, it's like, it's not on me. And I'm telling people, it doesn't matter if I'm physically there in Ghana, it's not going to get done any slower. Only thing that we do, we'll just lose momentum if I'm running Ghana, running around doing all this thing. So that's why we have to do it strategically and tactically. But uh, nevertheless, family, uh, uh, and, and Dr. Austin, uh, let me know if you want to share anything else. Um, I'm, I'm just looking forward to, uh, about how long does it take to, um, to do the foundation? That is a great question. Um, what do you think, Aziba, about a month? Because you have seen uh, Warbeck and a few of the people out there building foundations. I can only give you an estimation uh, to confirm uh, that uh, it would, it would, uh, I would have to talk to uh, uh, Welbeck. Uh, he, he, he's more, he's more uh, uh, acclimated to that type of uh, uh, speculation as far as Okay, I um as a matter of fact, he already reached out to me, so I asked him. Thank you, because I, I plan yeah. to get a um a rammed earth, a small one. I don't want the large one, but a small one. So thank oh, you. You want, you want a small uh, Yes, oh, I want like a tiny house. Oh, okay, all right. It's, it's smart because she wants she want to have more land. That's why. <laughs> that's exactly. <smart. laughs> exactly. <laughs> you, you, you miss a line coming. And see, but I'm going to Sierra Leone too, so I'm um I will have citizenship, in um when I come back from Sierra Leone in December. Yeah, I hear they they giving giving uh, uh, giving it up like free uh, almost free free. Yes, that is it's reasonable. Yes, it's if if your African ancestry says right. um, Sierra Leone, and okay. so mine does. Yeah, I definitely appreciate you, Doctor Austin, and really appreciate yeah. your patience and everything. Um, thank and, you. Uh, and just want to thank everybody in the group. Even if some people didn't show up, we appreciate them. Just making sure that our group energy is stable and organized. Because I'm telling people that. We had to go through a whole lot, man. As he will tell, tell you, man, um, where we're just trying to get people to like be on code and just like, hey, don't post reckless stuff in the group page. And if you have anything to say about me or say to me, call me and talk with me and everything. Don't insult me and disrespect me in front of my family and my group of people that's in there. Because most of these are my friends and family in the group and people that they know I've given my life uh, for the last 18 years uh, to build a movement from knowing nothing about Africa to just going out there and doing the work and figuring it out with other people. Uh, so I'm telling people that our life is committed to making this work. And, you know, just let people know that those trials and tribulations that we have been through, it has only made us stronger and, and things like that. And, and the, the energy of what we have been able to just work with the chief, he, you know, he sees that also. And you know, he's always encouraging us. But uh, nevertheless, so family, uh, let's, um, let's get some questions uh, from our sister. Go ahead, sister. Introduce yourself and um, tell us where you're calling from and your interest in our community and then your questions. Hi, um, I'm thankful to be here tonight. Um, my name is Jim Kia Fierro. I, I'm currently in Florida at my uncle Wilbur's house, but um, I live in Georgia, um, the southern part of Georgia, Riceboro. Uh, just moved there about a year ago um, from Maryland. Um, I'm retired military. Um, from the army, and I'm also a realtor. So I and I flipped houses. So Bomani, I understand the whole process of how the real estate um, can be frustrating. One of um, the things that are kind of important to me and um, and is 
the hospitals or clinics? Do you, uh, is there going to be one that's going to be built within the community or somewhere close? Because I'm a veteran, but I'm also a disabled veteran. So um, for me, I, mean, I'm, I am trying to be a little bit more holistic with my health, but at the same time, um, having some type of medical facility or hospital close by, it's really important for me. All right, perfect. Uh, let me see if uh, Dr. Cassandra or Azibo uh, can uh, answer that question. Uh, because, but the, the main thing directly is that uh, on phase two, what we have, we have a layout that shows a medical uh, center. And our goal is to uh, get our doctors and our people in our community that are nurses and make that work. Just like we need to get the people who can help us get the resources we need to build these facilities. And then we have people that are educators. Now, myself, a uh, straight educator based on technology, uh, teaching people how to fix planes and work, you know, and train them on electrical, electronic systems and computers. And then our sister, Dr. Leona Austin, she's also an educator. So when we look at the community energy that we have and the skills and what we're bringing, we know we'll be able to have an effective operation where you have, you know, you're trying to create your own ecosystem. Yeah. Yes. Trying to create your, your own ecosystem to where you have all the things that you need. And the, one of the most important thing, you know, is uh, health care. Uh, I did talk last night on a live that we did about trials and tribulations. It was very emotional to talk about it because I was talking about people, that, friends of mine that have died in Africa. Um, some of them are, some of them have been in this group also, um, two of them. And um, it's situations that can be prevented. Uh, so we, we do have to make sure that um, we build the facilities that we need because that's how it is you know, in countries like Ghana. You, you're going to have to build what you need unless you want to live in a city like Accra and Kumasi uh, where you have access to some of the best medical and best everything. But then you have to be willing to pay for those things. So if we build what we need to build, we can just make it work. And uh, so that's one of the issues that we have directly. There's no gas stations right there. There's no supermarket and things like that. But those things were designed for a reason. If I went to a town and I saw all those things, I, would, I, didn't, I, wouldn't, I didn't have interest because that gave us the opportunities to where we can bring in the energy from America and get some of these things built. So um, it's, a, it's, it's a nice conversation talking about how we can connect with people and how we can build these things. But the level of work it takes, um, you know, we, we're gonna have to really just come together and work effectively and figure it out because this marks the my three-year commitment to do majority of everything, uh, and now it's open up now to where you know, I want people to say, you know what, they did enough, so now let me participate and join them. Uh, go ahead, um, Dr. Sandra. Okay. Yes. Uh, right now, I, I know that there are in the vicinity about three health clinics. However, this coming Friday, I will be in conversation with the chief. He's working on a proposal. We have interest in the United States that they would like to develop a, uh, what is it, it's a, a, a medical center here in, in the community. So we will be working on that and a supermarket. She, she's, a, she's a dealing with a, a Nana Haley. Uh, to write a proposal, uh, and it's, it's involving uh, the medical center, the medical center, transportation hub, uh, uh, two schools, a supermarket. So those are some of the things that we're looking at right now. Back to you. Hi, Doug. And uh, so let us know if we answered uh, your question. Um, but uh, yes, the goal is to build all the facilities that we need so we can have our level of comfort. Because the only other way we're going to get that level of comfort if we pay a ridiculous amount of money and live in a city that I don't think any of us want to live in. Um, because, you know, like people like myself, I've gotten used to the, 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 the spoiled suburban life. You know, just living in uh, Kingston, Jamaican, and living in Brooklyn, New York. And then from there, after 18, I never lived in it really is, you know, in a city is usually just living like a nice suburban era for the last, uh, you know, 20 plus years. Uh, so those are some of the things that, uh, we, you know, we realize that, you know, we need what we need. And what I'm doing is I'm finding, I'm finding a breakdown real quick. I had it up here. Let me just scroll up to how the Yeah, um, just to go back, I appreciate that you answered my questions. 
And I guess in my mind, also on the flip side, if I ever really need it, I would just fly back to the States. <laughs> you know, and that's what I was explaining to people. I was like, sometimes I have friends like, you know, a lot of us are military veterans and, you know, people can say what they want to say about the veterans affair. It's, you know, it's better than some of the alternate yeah. options, um, especially if you need blood work and things like that. It's just, you know, it, it, it works right there. Uh, this is a rough draft of the 100 and, uh, so, excuse me, of the 60 acre, uh, which is divided into 120 residential, 120 um, commercial. So you, now you right here, you have this uh, those same plots that we have on the, the 15 acres, the 80 by 100, but what you have is 120 residential uh, because you're estimating for the future growth. Then you have a, then you have plots where if somebody say, hey, you know what, me and some of my partners want to invest in building an apartment, then they'll have that space right there. And they could just put their money together, purchase the lots, build, and then, you know, have them work out things to where, you know, where, you know, we help, we help them just get people or it would just literally honestly help because I don't think everybody wants to build a house. And some people may be in a situation where an apartment will work for them. So even when you see the 28 uh, plots for commercial and things like that, you see farmland. And in the middle, you see, a, you know, a store where you have all the things that you need community and business center, medical center, education center, maintenance. So that's um, a layout on the land. You know, it looks rough draft, but that's how the 15 acres look before we digitalize it. Now, we haven't finalized on this because you may need to make some more adjustments, uh, but I want to at least get it up that far, let people know that, you know, we have plans for, you know, for this lot right here. But for the, for the most part right now, we're just trying to get more momentum going for the 15 acres. That way, when people turn around, they can see a beautiful 15 acre community. And then now that will give us the momentum to do other things that we wanna do. So that is it right there. And you know, we can always dialogue on how we can move things around. And then if also, if we need extra land to do other things like more farming and build more apartments, uh, it's something that we can work out with the chief. All right, uh, so Mario, uh, do you have any questions or Carol or any other, other people that uh, has joined our presentation for the first time? Uh, no, I don't have any questions. I'm sure that a lot of the information is going to be on the uh, YouTube and the email that you sent me, and, and I'll read that before I, I just inundate you with questions. I guess at the outset, I saw there's a 99-year lease. Uh, so these plots of land aren't necessarily owned at the, at the expiration of the lease. Uh, that's it. Uh, what it is, it's, um, it's one of those um, automatic uh, renewal. You know, even when you talk to people in Ghana, you ask them what happens after 50, 99 years. They just say this automatically. So uh, the key thing about the agreement is, you know, we had to just make sure everything was in writing to where during the renewal, there's no bunch of taxes and everything. So we made sure that there was zero and things like that in the, in a, in the paperwork. But as far as the ones that I've shown that I've breathed through from the newsletter to the email, yeah, that would answer a lot of questions, but then you still have a lot more questions. So what you do is jot them down and you know, you and I can talk privately and then go through things because you know, most of the time what we have is this general presentation and then for people who I need to talk with specifically about things, you know, we just usually talk, but we always wanna make sure that we have a nice public recording, um, private conference that we're doing right now, but uh, a public recording that we put on YouTube so other people can, kind of to see what we're working on and everything and see that there's people out there working on your BF. That way, when you retire in the next five to 10 years and you're looking for, you know, to be around a group of people that, you know, you can connect with, you know, in the world of Pan-Africanism. And then, you know, we have a lot of wonderful people from Ghana that's, you know, that's also part of the community. So it's majority of us, uh, but, you know, if you go somewhere else in a, a community, you know, it's going to be majority of Ghanaians or Nigerians. And it's, it's what it is, but we tell people that, this is a, something that we needed to do to, 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 to take your things for ourselves because I see too much of our people going there individually and things that's not working out. So when you think of all of that money that we have lost, we could have built a whole city um, or maybe a few, a whole few cities. Uh, then Darren and I, the next person, appreciate you joining. You have any uh, questions in reference to the presentation or what? Uh, Yes, I actually do. Um, yeah, my name is Darren Britt. I'm currently in um, Wake Forest, North Carolina, originally from New York, Brooklyn. Uh, yes, Brooklyn. So I had a question in terms of the 99 years. I thought as a 
uh, a non-citizen that you were limited to 50 years? And if uh, you were a citizen, it was 99? Uh, yes. Uh, and when I spoke to the attorney, he says the chief discretion. So the uh, chief decided to go ahead and do that. He told us that he don't want us to feel like we're foreigners. <laughs> So okay. he, he want to give us the same thing as he, that, that he signs over to other Ghanaians that do land with him. Okay. And another quick question in terms of the building process, how does the sewage systems work? Is it like a septic underneath for? Exactly. Perfect. So uh, since everything is sustainable, um, you can put together a biodigester septic system uh, where it's a smaller septic system and it's something that can last a long time. And then, uh, so that's your, you know, for your, your, your sewage and wastewater. And then also um, what you're doing is you're just building your, whether it's your solar system or wind power system, and you're just building everything um, using modern day sustainable living uh, to make it work. Uh, if you want water also, you can get water from the borehole system. But the thing that I've always recommend is a catch water system. A catch water system, uh, once you catch all the water coming down from uh, your roof or you have it channeled into, you, know, you have it channeled into certain gutters, you have a tank either underneath your house like they do in St. Croix, or you have it on the side of your house. And you know, it's, it's buried to where uh, it's not exposed to light. Mm -hmm. And you know, so you can store all your, your water and then you, know, you do your treatment, but then you have a pump and filter system to where, so basically what you're doing, you're controlling your own, you have your own independent water system. And every time it rains, it's filling up, it's filling up, it's filling up. So you can maintain six months of water. And countries like Ghana, just like Liberia, I mean, I don't know if any other country that rains, 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 but all these are countries in a, a tropical atmosphere. So that's what I love about West Africa. You can get the best weather and you don't have to worry about, um, you know, not having uh, water. So we have a freshwater lake by the property about a mile away. We're also two miles away from the ocean. So you know, what you tell people is very important that you have access of the things you need to survive in water and also this fertile land to where you can grow what you need to grow. Okay, and I guess last question in reference to two miles away from the water. So in part of the phases, there is like oceanfront property that's gonna be available, a beachfront property. It's a conversation that I had with the uh, chief just to uh, let him know that, um, you know, we're not limiting ourselves to what we have and we wanna make it, you know, just being from Jamaican and seeing what um, the uh, Euro Asians did, which is basically take up all of the best parts of the island and build these mega resorts. I tell people, they, if they went to one part of the North Coast and Jamaica to the next part, they would see literally every single resort that with all of the big names that are out there, the, the, from the rich Arabs to the rich Asians, they have built it all there. And, you know, and it's another thing, just like I mentioned about all the land they've been clearing in this town and building everything up, you know, you're like, okay, how can we figure this out? And then it's back to Ghana. So we're right there close to the beach. So that's why I started having dialogue. I was like, I, could you imagine your, your town being transformed into a, a beach town into somewhere where it's, it's a perfect vacation getaway for our people? Uh, you know, because a lot of times, you know, you have Ghanaians in the country, you want to make sure that you build something to where them and their family can have a nice little getaway. Because unfortunately, some people can't get visas to come to America or go places. And, and then sometimes people just don't have money for, you know, plane tickets and things like that. So it will it'll also create an energy. And even theme, theme parks, if we had a contractor or somebody who literally wanted to wanted land to build a theme park or anything, then they can reach out to me because the chief said he's not dealing with people. He said this is his last time dealing with the situation. It's like it's basically telling me rather for the people to reach out to me and then they work it out with the lawyers and everything, and then they can do certain business. So it's basically made me one of made me is 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 broker to handle business and you know and that's why I was so happy when we 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 you know whatever we said we were gonna do and pay and everything we made sure he got his money and we followed through on everything so now he's giving us that respect. Uh, so now that office that you see right there it'll be a real real estate development office mm -hmm. and um, we'll be able to work those things out. So on that path we are figuring and working it out but the most important thing if we can get more things done on that 15 acres it will open people's eyes up to see that we're serious. And okay. um, they'll put it like, you know, we have people in this uh, here in Georgia that they've been watching what we're doing and they say they appreciate it. And but <laughs> some of them are not ready to jump in, but some of them, they can, you know, they, they have they, they have their factories and they have things that they have done here and they can make those moves. So the more we can get these things done, the more 
we'll be able to have people help us or work with us to get that vision completed the way you have literally an incredible beach town. And it's a place where us as a people can come and we have the things that we need. And if, like I mentioned, if someone falls on their luck or go through some of the things that I've seen people go through, we can actually say, reach out to them. So come on, family, come, come through so we can look out for you because you know, you're there in Ghana. So things go wrong for Ghanaians. They have their family and their people. Things go wrong for the Lebanese. Things go wrong for everybody else. Everybody else have their people and, and things in place. We're just the only ones don't. We do have black organizations there, but that's not really their function. Um, and what you have is most people telling you that they retire, which I do get it. I'm not here to, as somebody that's 45, I'm not here to, you know, you know, to make people feel disrespected because, you know, I mean, you give your time and then you retire. But my brother Zebo said the best revolutionaries don't retire. And if we're going to build the nation we're building, um, we can't just be in the mindset of retiring. Uh, we can be in a mindset that, yes, I'm, I'm semi-retired, but I also want to be a teacher in the community. I want to be someone that, um, that manages the business center and, and help our young children understand about uh, hygiene, or understand about academics or, and things like that. So that's, that's where we're at with uh, the mindset. Mm. Yeah, I'm on board with that. I had joined uh, Dr. Arakan at Chiambari Quiles organization, ADDI, last year. So I, I share that vision. Like you said, Group Economics, Africa 2063. So I'm on board with the uh, with the whole program. That's excellent. And uh, and then if you and I need to talk, uh, we can talk directly and we can go through some of the information and everything. And and you know, it's something that we don't pressure anyone. So it's like, but when people feel like they're ready to come in and things like that, you know, we just want them to just reach out and we just add them in. And but at the same time, too, what we're doing is working on more progress and more progress so we can just let people know that we're really serious because. When I look at the reality of it, if, if people were to judge us like the progress of those other community, you know, we wouldn't have a chance because people have seen so much failure. So when people see we have offices and they see houses going up, they, people are like asking me like, how did you guys get, get the, I was like, you know, I was like, well, you have to spend the money. You have to have attorneys and you have to have consultants and you have to have all aspects of the, those people to, to run this. Other than that, you at the mercy to stupidity. And I've seen it too much times. Like I mentioned, I brought well over 500 people to Ghana and um, I have a good, about a good 10 terrible cases. And I've, you know, we had to also tell them that the damage is done already. That person is not, you're not going to find that person. And when you go back there, they're going to give you another chief. And then, and then, you know, so, you know, that's why we have to make sure this work because you know, we have lost a lot of people that, um, you know, that was really passionate about being in Ghana. And based on the fact that they went through a little trials and tribulations, and I can't say little because when people have their life savings and their money involved, it's, just, it's not just a little situation. And so that's why we're just making sure that we do our part and make sure that we get ourselves organized as best as possible. Because that, that loss of energy now, that person, like example, let me give you a good eye, example. Um, the, Tariq, the, the filmmaker Tariq Nasheed, uh, he was uh, looking to do things in, in different parts of Africa. But after he realized the, the messy drama and everything, it turned him off. And then now he's more so focused on foundations of, you know, foundational Black Americans of, of more focus on America. But that's the momentum that we lose when these things happen because you can get, I mean, you can go through all hells of things in America, but all it takes is just you to go to Africa once and have a one bad experience and then you're done with the continent. Not even just Ghana, you're done with the entire continent. South Africa is the same, and every other country become the same. It's unfair to the highest level, but you know, when people step out and try to make these moves, it's like either it works, and if it doesn't work, they're done. Um, and then next thing you know, they become that angry person, and all they're doing is this, you know, I mean, I don't have to tell anybody, the videos are on the video, a lot of, a lot of the videos are on YouTube and things like that. So when people hear about these things, they want to know if we're in that ball game. I was like, no, we don't do these fraudulent stuff, and we we follow a certain process and things like that. So you tell them that's why we don't have these issues and these trouble. So we tell them people like, let's let's get ourselves more organized, and let's not sit around and blame everything on Africa. Africa is what it is. Uh, whatever country you go to, the language, the culture, and things like that. And that's what the, uh, that's what me and uh, brother uh, Azibo talk about all the time uh, that, you know, the people in the town don't necessarily know who we are, what we're about, even though I've done presentations in the town with the chief and things, but that doesn't represent all of the people in the town. And, you know, and we have to keep on just letting people know that um, 
because I don't know how sometimes people look at us. Um, they can, you know, there's so much bad image about us as black people in America to where sometimes you don't know what people see and things like that. But I'm always telling people that, you know, we want to, ex we want to sh show that, you know, we're, that you have different aspects of black folks in America. And some people don't have any interest in doing anything in Africa, but we're a special pan-African group. And, you know, we want to learn the culture. We want to be a part of the future of what you're building. Uh, so all, by basically doing all those things, you know, it has changed the dynamics of what we, you know, got going on. So lo looking forward to showing you more progress because we're, we're going to be jumping on it, especially when these surveys come back. For sure. I'm definitely planning on making my first trip next year. Oh, perfect. Uh, so if you can always travel with us, we go to Ghana um, in May next year. Um, we'll be coming back. Um, we'll be heading to Ghana coming up in December. And then, okay, good. Uh, so you can always join us or if you decide that you need to, you, uh, you're going to travel around a different time, you just, all you have to do is just let me know and uh, usually just communicate with Aziz when I send them, you know, your information and we just share information and then when the day comes to where, when you're ready to go, you know, we work it out to make sure that the driver is clear how to get you there, give you the GPS links and things like that. Okay. Uh, so, or if you just deal with us on tour, the, the bus takes you right there to the office and it takes you right there on the land and it takes you in, around the town. Okay, good. All right, uh, Carol, um, I don't remember seeing you on the call. Um, do you, would you like to share, would you, do you have a question or would you like to share any information or, or, or are we just listening to what we're talking about? Yes, good evening. I am just listening and uh, thank you for having me on the call. I, um, I live in, in Georgia and uh, I recently visited South Africa. In fact, I just got back about two weeks ago and I'm really looking to find a second home or place uh, in Africa. So I'm just, um, I guess, scouting around, you know, looking and seeing what will work for me and my family. Perfect. Um, I'm not sure about Ghana. I, I'm so, I'm just, um, because I understand there's certain restrictions for people coming in from the US uh, as far as vaccinations and all of that. So I'm just looking and seeing what will work. And um, so that's basically all I'm looking to be on. Um, just, um, I don't know, just I will perfect. gathering I information, I guess. Oh yeah, gathering is good, and um, you know we, you know also we have this websites of and and social media pages full of information. So, uh, not sure if you're on when I was sharing the email and talking about the newsletter, but uh, if you're not on the email list or you didn't get those emails and things, you can just you know text me your information, and I could just send you our details. The detail will be the newsletter, and it'll be the actual um, email that I showed uh, earlier with all of the the legal files and the process of everything that we're doing. And you can just take as long as you need to process it. And if we still have land in phase one and you want to jump on one of those, then you can. If not, then we have another phase and things like that. And if, you know, if it just doesn't connect with you, uh, we do understand, but we make ourselves available even when you're, if you're, you're in Ghana. You know, we have that office right there. That way, anyone who have any interest can physically see the land and then just see that we have a presence there physically. Now, so, and then, you know, once I send you the email, if you just want to have a conversation with me, we can talk. But as far as uh, Ghana, you can get to Ghana with a COVID-19 um, with a COVID uh, PCR test. And if you have a vaccination card, um, you, you know, you don't have to take uh, any kind of COVID test. So those are the things that they have going on. And um, I've seen a lot of people who said they were going to Ghana and they let this, uh, this stuff about vaccinations and things throw them off. Uh, they're, you know, and Ghana still will always, even though they, you know, they're, they're going through their... Um, you know, inflation and things like that. Ghana for me will always be one of the only and few countries where we can do what we're doing. Try to go do that in Tanzania, South Africa and everywhere else, it's not happening. Um, some countries, they tell you that you gotta go after three months, you know, we, and I'm trying to see, all of us have residency here or most of us have residency. And uh, once we, you know, we can keep on renewing our residency and then eventually, you know, we work towards citizenship, especially when we build out the community and we all get our final title and and deeds and things like that. 
you know, you can put yourself in a better situation now where you can you know, get your final paperwork as far as your citizenship. So that's what we're working towards. Um, there is, in, 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 when in dealing with Ghana, um, I have my frustration in Ghana, but I have to always compare it to everything else. And my brother, Prince Charles, if you can mute yourself, brother, that way I can, you can share a few things. And you know, I want you to share your experience as far as this, you know, the, the potential of what we can get done in Ghana uh, based on you living there now. Um, and if you're not available, brother, just uh, let me know if you're not available, but uh, let me click on link to unmute you. Yes, good morning, good evening. Yes, yes, brother, yes, uh, appreciate it. This is your second time now living in Ghana. Yes, it is. It's my second time here. Yes, it is. and you have been a, you um you have to go through some of, you have to go through some of the similar things that we're dealing with land and paperwork. But the thing of it is, you're in Accra now, Max, and you based on dealing with the lands commission and the survey and registration and things like that in Accra, because uh, Accra is going to definitely be more advanced than our Cape Coast system. Uh, have you been able to get everything quick, fast, on time, and easy, or has it been? where things are still delayed, even though you're in the, the metropolis city of Accra? Okay, well, I'll put it like this, right? Here in Ghana, you can get things done, especially here in Accra, but it will cost you, for instance, Lands Commission, to be honest with you, a lot of the fees aren't as expensive as you think they might be, but just say now you want to uh, do something specific I can't say exactly what, but just say they have a fee of 200 CDs. Just say, just say to register a land, the fee is 200 CDs. Just, just say, if the fee is that, you're going to pay maybe 2,000 CDs. You're not going to pay 200 because you're going to have to give a tip. If you don't pay the tip, it will, it will keep long. as what they would say here. It, would, it just won't get done. It will just crank out. You understand? So, you know, coming here, you know, you can't really fight the system. You just have to adapt. It's like this. You think you come here, you think you'll change Ghana. Ghana will change you. You won't change them. It will change you. So you just have to adapt to how they do things. So, for instance, if you're coming, you know, even when you first arrived here at the airport, at the, you know, the international airport here in Accra, um, you have to have your yellow fever card, you have to either have your PCR test, or you have to have your COVID vaccine card. If you don't have these things, you're just gonna get hemmed up. You know, and you know, don't sort of like try to fight with the people because you know uh, you won't win. You know, they'll they can make life difficult, you know. So you have to really adapt. It's just best life. If you're in the wrong, just, you know, swallow your pride and just go along, get along. Apparently, why? Because you're not in the States and you can't just say, yeah, I'm going to sue. It just doesn't work that way. Either. So, yeah. So, basically, like, back to the registration stuff. Yeah, so you can get stuff done here. You can get it expedited, but it will cost you. Everything here has a premium. The only thing I remember, uh, like when you went to the, the office to get your Ghana card, I think that was the only place that you didn't really have to pay a tip really because everything was just sort of like they had the cashier, they had the people who could print the Ghana card and stuff like that. Yeah, that was kind of different. Residency. If you go through your, the normal routes, you need time here. To do that. But you can have an expedited cost. You. So for about $5,000, if you want to expedite it to get your residency. If you want to get it an alternative way, get it that way. But you're going to need, probably, I need to be here at least a month. Uh, yes, and you're have, you have, you having some strong feedback from your phone. I made sure I muted all of the lines. Okay. Uh, it might be my fan. Oh, yeah. If you can just turn it off a little bit so you can get hot. 
Yeah. <laughs> no, you can't get too hot here at the moment because it's like 90 degrees here at the moment. It's hot. It's really, really hot. Yeah, just, um, so, you don't have to turn on your camera, but uh, just take off your shirt and it's not that natural breeze hits you. But we can hear you clear now. Yeah, you can hear me much better now? Uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so basically, you know, uh, you, get, you can get stuff done here, but it, it'll cost you. And um, you may as well pay. Because if you don't pay, you don't get what you want. So as I said, you know, you just have to adapt here, you know. You're not in Canada, you're not in Europe, you're not in the US. So coming here and thinking, well, like, you know, you know, um, I'm a foreigner, that's not really gonna make any difference here to these people. You're in their country and it's their system. So a lot of people come here and they're kind of like stubborn, you know, they're in the wrong or you've broken the law or you sort of like didn't do something and you get, you know, pulled up about it and, you know, you have an attitude. It, it just making life more difficult for yourself. Just, you know, except that you made a mistake and they say, hey, you know, give me something and we'll forget about the whole thing. Just, just, you know, take the offer and just keep it moving, you know. And another thing to write, if you're, if you're coming here to do anything, do your due diligence, you know, ask a lot of questions and just, just don't take people's word, you know, check it, do some research, get different opinions, you know, um, if you're going to do anything here, get a consultation from somebody, a professional, it save you a lot of money, you know, because you'll have people come up to you and say, oh yeah, I got land to sell, and some of these people, they're just agents. And sometimes they don't even have even the permission to even sell you this land. They just know about it and they're taking your money and they would say, oh, we own the land. And as soon as you give us the money, we'll give you documents, blah, blah. It's all lies. Easiest way to get conned out of your money. You know, if you're buying a land from somebody here or a house, the first thing you're going to need from them is some paperwork, you know, um, land certificate and you take that to the lands commission and make sure whoever's name is on there tallies up with the name that they say who is the owner so these are the little things that you have to do to make sure you're not being cheated you see because a lot of people come here and get cheated but sort of like people come here on the whim thinking like yeah i can just move to god or i can just do business here just like how you would conduct yourself in the States. And no, no, it's, it doesn't work that way. You'll be robbed. You'll be robbed of your money. So you have to get a consultation, you know, from a professional. You know, just get advice. It's just too many stories going around where people are just coming in making reckless mistakes. And another thing a lot of brothers and sisters are doing, are moving out here, not just necessarily to Ghana, just moving to the continent with like $2,000 and they come in here with family, two kids, wife and everything. It's just, just can't do that. You know, $1,000 don't go anywhere here in Ghana right now, okay? We've got 37.2% inflation out here. Money, you know, I think it's like, it's like a dollar gives you like 15 CDs. Sounds like a lot of money, but by the time you try to buy anything, you know, um, it's like three or four times the price as compared to when I arrived in March. So the money doesn't really go anywhere that much. So, you know, if, you, if you're coming here to live in Ghana or come in to stay, you know, you really sort of like have to really um, be sensible with where you stay. Because if you want to stay in East Lagoon, it's nice. You might be able to stay in a gated community. Security is there and everything is laid out. It's just like being in the state, but it'll cost you. But if you go to different neighborhoods where you might not have a compound, might not be concreted, it might be dirt. You might not have a poly tank. You might not have security, but you'll save some money. So all these things you have to take into account. 
You know, the best thing really is to get a consultation from somebody like yourself who have been to Ghana multiple times, who, who knows the system. And you have people who are vetted, people who you trust can advise them. That way they won't get cheated out of their money and they won't you know, go off on the wrong track. Most of the people who come here and lose their money are people who never had a consultation, never been to Ghana before, came here, just thought like, you know, they can do everything on their own and it just didn't work out. So those are the people who tend to lose their money here. But, you know, if you do things correctly, you'll be okay. You know, so, yeah. It's pretty much my, my analysis of how this country works. Well, know. perfect, brother. Uh, perfect uh, energy. And uh, always thank you for sharing um, upfront uh, information. And uh, as I'm telling people that family, you know, we have our energy you know, from Africa. America and back, you know, so we have people moving back and forth, going back and forth. We have, you know, we have this active energy of repatriation going. And um, the goal is to keep on working at it and make it stronger. So I appreciate your, your feedback, brother, and everything. And um, I'll definitely I'll let you know if uh, the survey send your paperwork so I can send it to you. You can just check it out. And I do have my good brother here, Kamal and Kosi. Uh, greetings, uh, Kamal. Um, thank you for building that beautiful house. And just want to see if you wanted to share anything uh, with us about the, um, you know, about the community or about your home building and just about this, any vision or any advice that you have for us and things like that. Hey, come on, let me know if you wanna share anything. The line is uh, unmuted. All right, um, your line is unmuted, but uh, we can't hear you. Oh, um, I thought that was you, Kamal. That's actually Prince. I right, come out once it works. Uh, just chime in, and you know, we just you can just uh, talk and introduce yourself. Uh, but uh, while come out, I was working on that. I just want to know if anyone have any uh, questions or anything that you'd like to share. And I don't want to hold our uh, people there in Ghana too long um, because you know, the, from the death, so it's uh, you know being late. All right, and I'm trying this, to see. Go ahead. This is Carol. I would um, like to know on average, what would it cost to uh, build a, say, four bedroom, two bath house on a, a plot of land on average with, uh, okay, with, with the right. ecosystem that you spoke about earlier for the yeah, rainwater? That's, yeah, that's not easy to give that estimate, but uh, if you're talking about the infrastructure, what you need, uh, you can even look at the price of the homes. It could be from anywhere based on materials, fifty to seventy thousand U.S. dollars, and uh, you can add another, um, you know, ten thousand for the things that we're talking about. And uh, if Kamal or anyone that's physically building would like to give their breakdown, that would also work. And this is then the price I'm giving is just based on uh, what I've asked all of the builders to give me as far as an estimate. So work in that range, you know, fifty to seventy-five. And you're talking about you know, four bedroom, three bathrooms and things like that. And you may want a wall and you may want certain things. So that is what, uh, that's how the ranges are adjusted. And then we also have a list of builders. So individuals can get that list and they can talk to the builder and ask some questions and, you know, and get direct answers directly from the builder slash the architects that's, that's a part of every building crew. And we have a list well, of six of them on the list. Go ahead. Hey, listen to this, right? Last year, April, a bag of cement in Ghana was around about 35 CDs a bag. Okay. And as of lately, 
at least last week, um, I was researching cement and it was 81 CDs a bag. So imagine if you need, you know, a thousand bags of cement right now, which is going to cost you. Iron rods are extremely expensive. Uh, half ton of sand, <laughs> it's extremely expensive. Same thing with stones, um, building blocks, they're at least minimum between five CDs and 50 pesos for one block. Between that and seven CDs for the pesos for building blocks. So, you know, um, whatever it costed Kamal to build his house, <laughs> it gonna cost you a whole lot more. I don't know how many rooms he has in his house, but uh, it, it, it's gonna cost you a lot more. Yeah, he probably, probably, I don't know, just say it cost him 70,000 to build that house. With the inflation, it would be a hundred thousand. Just say, just say hypothetically, it cost them seventy thousand to build that house. Now it costs hundred thousand. Well, Easy. the situation is uh, the the yeah, it should be somewhat similar because one hundred US dollars used to be worth like six seven hundred. Now it's double that. So but the thing is, US dollars it's adjusted as far as your increase in the the, the money that goes up. So. <clears throat> It can still but be around seventy thousand, but if you just wanted to use like straight CDs and then you paid in CDs, then you can you can you can show the the thirty percent uh, increase. But, uh, but here's the, thing, the U.S. dollar make it work out. But here's the thing, though, right? Um, you might can get more money for the dollar, but it really hardly really makes a difference because by the time you go to the store, the things are costing three four times the price that it, it did when the inflation was much less. For instance, when I came, a sachet water, yeah, a sachet water was like 30 pesos. No, it's one uh, seat. <laughs> I think tomorrow it will go up. It will go, no, 30 pesos. Now, tomorrow it will be 60 pesos. We were buying, uh, I think it was like 30 bags in a sack, right? When I came, it was like four CDs. Then it went up to five. Then it went up to six. Uh, just in the week, I purchased a sack. It was like seven CDs. Then I bought another sack on Friday. It was eight CDs. They say on tomorrow, it will go up to maybe 12 or 15 CDs. A bag of 30. That's, that's, that's the sachet of water. 30 of them in a sack will be between 12 and 15 CDs. Fuel right now is 17 CDs a liter. You understand? Mangoes, like when I came, I could get a mango for five CDs. You got people selling one mango for 15 CDs. Wow. We're talking about a tray of eggs. When I came, it was like 22 CDs for a tray of eggs. Yeah, that's two dozen eggs. Now it's 50 CDs. So you see where I'm coming from? Even if you have $50, it's not really buying you anything, really. Because the food is like triple the price and it's everything. And you got this president here, he's clueless. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's senile as hell. Man's just a damn fool. He's incompetent. And then he's, then the finance minister is his cousin, as incompetent as anything. I don't even think that, the finance minister even knows how to even count. <laughs> no, seriously. The fine people right now up in arms, they want the finance minister to go. It's the president's cousin. So you know he's, he's hired a, a delinquent. He doesn't have a clue what he's doing. I'm going to send you the video where the president came on TV3 today and he was doing an interview. He's just talking a load of babble. Oh, he wants the people to work with him to go to man, please go sit your ass down. You don't know what you're doing. You need to resign. But then if he resigns, <laughs> what they would have to do is call a snap election and get, you know, the other the other party to take over or something. But because I mean it's just a mess right now. It, it, it's a rest, it's a mess. Because I mean the, the money here is just, just not worth anything anymore. I mean, right now, uh, 
it's a bad time to be in Ghana right now. Seriously, it really is. It's not a good time to be here because of all the economic troubles and nobody seems to have any clue how to dig themselves out of this. Every day, the money just keeps devaluing more and more and more. See, there's no leadership. So I kind of feel sorry for the Nians, but are they gonna, because I mean, I could up and leave tomorrow. I could leave if I want, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to, I didn't come here to flee back as soon as the heat gets turned up. I'm going to stick it out. You go, go through, you're going through the trials and tribulations and making it work. And, um, and that's what I tell people that we just have to uh, do and um, give us about a good two years. A new government will be in and the government that was in before this. Uh, I mean, they really just embraced the, the African diaspora. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you got you got people insulting the president here, left, right and center. People, <laughs> people are even apologizing to Mahama, saying, sorry, sorry, sorry. We thought you were a failure, but we wish you could come back right now. Well, all Seriously. the success, all the success in the country is because of the previous president. I mean, I remember being there, and then they laid the foundation for what they was able to accomplish up until like the 2019 year return. Come on, if you see some of the videos with some of the stuff that he accomplished, there, you know, he did a lot. He did a lot, but he just didn't get the credit for it, though. Because you know, a lot of the stuff that uh, a president will start. He just won't see it out at his tenure. Another president will come and finish it off. Yes, absolutely. This this president really just pushed out a lot of foolishness like the uh, Ghana card and all that nonsense. It's just, it was unnecessary. Well, I don't know if the president that pushed out the Ghana card, but I don't think the Ghana card is, is relevant, really. They spent a lot of money, you know, uh, getting this thing out. And it doesn't really fix anything for him. It's just a waste of money and time. You know? Where, you know, it's just, it's just a mess here. That's all I can say. Well, brother, appreciate your feedback. And uh, one thing I'm just uh, being honest with people that, you know, we're, we're doing our best to be real with everyone just completely because we don't want to sell anyone a romanticized connection of Africa. And that's why I love the tours that we do because you can come and just enjoy the best time in the country and then you can just head back to America and then you know, continue on with your life. But it's like, if you literally looking to live, do business and things like that, be ready to go through the storm. But what we're doing here is to make it easier for other people in the future. And that's why we really wanted to try to get some additional energy to make that office like an incredible real estate development office. So I'll be definitely talking with um, Aziba and Dr. Cassandra as um, uh, especially since now we know um, what we're working with as far as the, the rental and things like that. Uh, so we're going to make, you know, make these things work and just hang in there and um, give them a chance to work on what they need to work on. And then while we're doing that, trying to work with some other countries to where we can you know, build our strength together. Because the more energy that we have in Africa, the, you know, it's, it just gives us a, an incredible leverage. All right. So, um, Azibo and uh, Cassandra, you guys want to say, um, both of you, you have anything else to share or add? Uh, I don't want to keep you too long. And then let me mute you, uh, Prince Charles. I don't want to keep you too long. And um, we just about, you know, I feel like we have went through all of the documentation and we have also just give updates and we have also to share information and recommendation. Uh, so if either one of you have any more to say, go ahead. And then, you know, once you finish, you can just drop off the call and then we just close out. Because I know it's late there and you're probably uh, getting tired. Uh, you have to, let me click on, there you go. I'm looking forward to meeting some, uh, some more pioneering and uh, <laughs> durable, uh, leadership, somebody that's, that's uh, capable of uh, sticking to uh, a commitment to uh, the liberation of Black people as myself, like myself, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to meet those type of people, you know, everybody's going, uh, going with the flow of this white supremacist system and they they they're not they don't they don't have any uh, uh, ancestral backbone. 
you know, they, they, they don't they don't feel that ancestral energy. So I'm looking forward to uh, meeting some people uh, that has the same type of energy that I have. You know, I, I really miss that type of uh, uh, human being or, or that, that type of God. I don't know if you understand me. We hear loud and clear, brother, and and like, like we and I talk about, um, we have to put a lot of things to the side and focus on Pan-Africanism, because um, if too much of us focus on our religion, we'll have more division, and if too much of us focus on politics, we'll have even more division and things like that. So the thing that brings us together is our love for Pan-Africanism and our love to see us connect together as a people. Um, yeah. And and like I told everyone, uh, you know, uh, when we have the community build, if you want to hold whatever religion you have, and you know, you end up people use the conference room or use the, the, the community center and do what you need to do all good and aspect you know just the only thing just asking people to do is just respect everyone's uh, belief and things like that uh because it's one of those situations um and you know even look at how me and my family was raised in jamaica you know you know, you know it is in in island straight christianity and things um and so and then you know i just started over the years meeting more people that uh, embrace islam so you know you have the love and respect for you know, for what our people are into. And you, know, you go to most African countries, you know, majority of religion, 90% Islam and Christianity. Uh, so, you know, but at the same time, we tell people that this, you know, use it as a tool to, you know, for us to progress and not um, a tool to keep us divided and have conflicts and issue with us based on uh, spiritual or religious beliefs. Right, Absolutely, so appreciate uh, both of you. Um, and once again, family, that's our vice president in our office, uh, Azibo, and um, the secretary, Dr. Cassandra. And, um, you know, so appreciate them and want us to just keep on encouraging them and that we're going to figure this thing out to where, you know, we're going to be able to take this to another level. So just hang in there and um, I'll be reaching out to both of you this week. And the goal is for us to work on, you know, the game plan of, of for December and also what we're going to do for next year. Uh, that way we can just all be clear and just work together in sequence. And, you know, we have people coming to visit the land and people coming to start doing other things. So, you know, the revenue as far as, uh, you know, we'll, we'll pick back up. You know, I'm telling people this whole COVID thing has been, oh, man, it just wears you out. But uh, the economy is picking back up to where people are, you know, they're ready to start doing certain things and they're ready to start traveling again. So we're going to be getting more and more people there to visit their, their plots of land and be there to check out the community. So just keep the energy going with the security and uh, clearing the land and this, uh, the public relations and this, you know, this, this, you know, build a program that you see feasible that will just get us connected. And, uh, you know, I'll keep on doing what we're doing here and I'll just keep on making sure that we get you all the support. So both of you are okay. So just thank you for hanging into the rough times and everything and brighter days are coming. Right. All right, well, perfect. Um, so family, appreciate everybody uh, joining. Uh, we did a little over two hours uh, conference call. So we have a nice recording to share with the members who didn't make it. And also people who may be potentially looking to uh, join us. Uh, so thank everybody for joining the presentation on this uh, Sunday and uh, let's uh, keep uh, communicating and then for those of us that are in the group I'll keep on posting updates in the group and for the new people that once you decide to fill out the paperwork and do certain things then you know we can add you into the group and things like that but beyond that you know we have you on the email list and we'll keep just sending updates as best as possible. All right so everyone um, once again you take care and enjoy the rest of your Sunday and uh, we'll talk and keep in touch. Okay, thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye. All right, family. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.